Hello and welcome back to the virtual show. My name is Paul Davis. And I'm Joe Longburn. Hello. Thank you very much for everyone that's coming. Uh, thank you for tuning in live. It's always lovely to see you. Please let us know that you're watching live as well by uh, placing a hello or a, a wavy hand in the comment. It's, uh, it's or from nice Menke Dancer see. like we had last night. Yeah, we've, we've had it now. We, we, had should, we, we should find the other emojis so people can search <laughs> for the emojis. Yeah. Camera emoji. emoji. Yeah, camera emoji. Yeah, we're requesting a camera emoji and a Tamron lens emoji as well. If you can <laughs> Does one exist? <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yes, it's wonderful having you here today. So uh, we had a lovely day yesterday. We did. So, um, which we can day. say every day now That's because true. you know we're, we're going to have lovely days. <laughs> so every day is a lovely day. It's just a matter of perspective. <laughs> yes. Um, so who are the guest speakers that we had yesterday? So we had. Um, in the morning, we had. <laughs> Have you forgotten? Oh no no no! It was Tim Jones from Photo Speed. Yeah. Yeah. Then we had Andy from Peak Design. Yeah. And then we had uh, Dibs. We um, certainly did. Interview. Yeah. Cool. I was got thrown by this now. morning earlier because yeah. we didn't have one this morning. <clears throat> that, that was it. That's what's pushed us slightly yeah. out. And you can uh, find all of those videos uh, on our rewatch section of our website as well. So you can go to cambrianphoto.co.uk and you're able to click on guest speakers for the virtual winter show and see all the speakers that have been. And you can rewatch all of the videos that we've gone live. Uh, you can also go on there to uh, schedule any live videos that we've got coming up as well. So uh, please go to the website and uh, check that out. Yeah, sounds good. Right. So we've got a few comments. Have we? Yeah. <laughs> you can't see, can you? <clears throat> so hello, Graham. Uh, good afternoon from a sunny, for a change in brackets, Hull. Uh, yeah. It's what's nice the weather sun. Yeah, what's the weather like today? I haven't really seen that. So this studio has no windows. Yeah. So. <laughs> Basically, a large box <laughs> with a few doors. Um, afternoon, Tracy. Um, good to see you. Well, good to see your comment and a little profile picture of you. <laughs> um, right. So we will um, <clears throat> we will get on with it, and we'll speak to a uh, Jerry from Tamron. Um, so put any questions you have. Oh, there we go. Gary Eisenhower has found the camera emoji for us. Wait. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll um, we'll bring Jerry onto the screen. Hello, Hello. Jerry. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> we managed to uh, get over our um, uh, audio gremlins. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. minor sound issues, but hopefully you can hear me fine now. Yeah, yeah we can we hear you really well. Can. Yeah, and, uh, as long as you can hear us as well, that's the, that's all, that's all well and good. So Mr. you might so not be saying that at the end. Yeah, well, that's very true. That's very true. But there must be something about going live that. Uh, Three o'clock. Yeah, that just doesn't like. Yeah. Streamyard's like, nah, three o'clock's yeah. not my time. You're not having it. Three o'clock. Streamyard's <laughs> having a, a slice of cake and a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's just one of so, the that's what it is. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Jerry. It's uh, lovely, uh, lovely to have you. Definitely. So we're going to go through um, the Tamron range, or some of the Tamron range, given yeah. the fact that Tamron make an awful lot of lenses. Um, and we might be here for longer than 45 minutes. <laughs> If we're talking about every lens that Tamron makes. Um, but I guess um, if we could start with you kind of uh, giving a brief overview of who Tamron are, just for those people who've been in a dark box for decades upon decades. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So, so Tamron are, are a manufacturer of uh, lenses that fit uh, uh, sort of SLR cameras and mirrorless cameras. Um, they've been in business for uh, uh, 70 years now. It's actually their 70th anniversary year this year. Um, so they've been around for an awful long time, uh, making uh, uh, all sorts of different lenses. Um, and uh, really, really big company right the way around the world. Um, it's sometimes known as a third party manufacturer of lenses because they're, um, uh, they're not kind of the, the maker's own, I guess. They're not Canon or Nikon or Sony or uh, whatever it happens to be. Uh, but they make lenses that fit all of those different types of uh, brand of cameras. So um, uh, they've got lots and lots of different options. Uh, one of the things um, I guess they became famous for many years ago, I think it was about 1992, uh, they, they made the world's first um, uh, what we call super zoom lens, so uh, a kind of lens that does uh, uh, multiple things, goes over a huge range. Uh, and at the time, I think it was a seven, seven times zoom, 7.1 times zoom, which uh, uh, came out and uh, did really, really good business for them uh, back then. And then they've gradually developed that technology over the years uh, for all of the different advances that there have been in uh, 
uh, and camera technology. So uh, we've had lots of different solutions. The, the original one, like I say, is a 7.1 times, and then we got uh, uh, an 11 times zoom, uh, and then we you know, gradually worked its way up to uh, 18 and, uh, um, uh, and, and higher still. So uh, uh, the 18400 is the, the biggest zoom that we do now. Um, which, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, so 18400 goes right the way from 18 mil, which is really wide angle, yeah. um, to 400 mil, which is uh, uh, much more telephoto reaching into the distance. Just all in we one. We quite a lot of those, just yeah. because you basically buy one lens and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. it's a pretty big, but it's well, a, not pretty, big, it's a yeah. pretty big range. Yeah. But actually, it's incredibly small and tiny for yeah. the range that it's actually. Oh big. yeah, definitely. It's, yeah. You know, not not a lot. I don't weigh a huge amount either, given the fact that it's consumed yeah. so much. I've yeah. uh, I've got massive hands. Yeah. 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 Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, you got massive hands. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So there, there we go. The, the zoom range is what we have. It's, uh, uh, it's a great bit of kit. The nice thing is, if if you if you've got a camera and you uh, um, <clears> you want to go on holiday or something, and and you just want to pop one lens on that's going to cover everything for you so that you don't have to change lenses because sometimes you're in a dusty environment and you don't want to take the lens off the camera to risk it. That's the sensor um, protecting lens, isn't it? You never oh, have to take yeah. it off the front of your camera. Yeah. There you go. You can save money on sensor cleaning by buying that lens. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> We're working ourselves out of money here. <laughs> um, there's a range of them as well. So we had before that the 16300 that we've still got. Um, there's an 18 to 200. So if you've got a slightly um, smaller budget, or so you've got, so you've got one of the um, smaller cameras, like a um, uh, what is it, the, the Canon 1300 or something that kind yeah. of size, where you've bought a camera because it's really tiny, but it's still a DSLR. Actually, you want a really lightweight lens to go with that. So something yeah. like the 18 to 200 is perfect. Um, yeah. Just about 400 grams works really, really well with it. They are they are great lenses and come in at a great price point as well, considering what you're saving on not having to buy three or four, maybe even five lenses to yeah. cover the same range, which I think is and also saves you money on a chiropractor or an osteopath because <laughs> <laughs> you're not looking at around a load of lenses. Um so yeah, I think um the super zoom is going to be here for a while and I think it's something that people should consider and not have as much snobbery about sometimes as well. Yeah, I mean it's 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 always a compromise but for sure. I, it, the super zooms they they fit so well into that general everyday environment whether whether you're a you know a, a pro that's using sort of uh you know generating photography for work yeah. uh, it'd still be a great lens because you know if you're going to an area and you really don't know what you're doing, yeah, and you're yeah. not allowed a lot of kit, yeah. then you know you're going to have everything covered. For sure. But as somebody uh, yeah. getting into photography, yeah, you can go from like landscape to wildlife. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good lens for just uh, practicing on yeah. and really figuring out maybe what lens <clears throat> you'd want to buy as a yeah. prime lens later on. Perfect when you shoot, and then you go into Lightroom, and it'll tell you all the focal lengths yes. that you use most often. <laughs> Absolutely. I used to do uh, I used to do camera club talks sometimes, and I'd go into a camera club environment where you've maybe got uh, sort of 60, 70 people in a room, uh, and I used to go and have a chat about the different uh, lenses and lens options that are available. And it, I was amazed how uh, loads of people are really interested in super zooms because it gives you the ability to shoot at, at wide angle if you want to and to shoot a telephoto if you want to. So if you're learning about and exploring photography, uh, it gives you all of those different options so that you can play in various different areas and, and otherwise you wouldn't necessarily have the funds or the uh, or, or the, the the knowledge to, to know which lens you want to buy um, yeah. if you want a specific lens or something but but we talk about compromise as well and and every lens has got a compromise if you buy a 24 70 f 2.8 it's compromised because it's big and heavy um, yeah. in comparison to other lenses you've yeah. got the 2.8 but it depends kind of how you're using it sure um, Another interesting thing, actually, on super zooms is uh, for Sony users as well. Uh, we released a, um, a an all-in-one purpose lens uh, a few months back, um, uh, which is the twenty-eight to two hundred, and that mimics back to the early days of Tamron, uh, where they started yeah. with the super zoom story. So it's seems to be named the similar name. 
it's like the A68 or something, isn't it's it? The A the A071 is what they've called That's it. And right. the original lens was a 71D, I think. Yes. Um, or, uh, uh, I've got it just here, and it's really, really small. But if you've got a Sony mirrorless camera, this is only 100 and, 117 millimeters long. But if you've got a Sony camera, the lovely thing that they've done is uh, a lot of people that are buying into the kind of A7 series cameras are, um, uh, uh, are, are quite um, uh, they're, they're great photographers, and they're people that are looking to advance themselves with a with a great bit of kit. And this lens is the first one that Tamron have produced, which is 2.8 at the wide end. So oh. you're still getting that fast aperture. Um, so you can still play really close to stuff and get uh, uh, things in the background that you can uh, um, uh, blow the background away when you're at the wide angle side. And then it just goes through at the 200 mil end, uh, you're at 5.6, which is still really, really good. Um, I'm just amazed at how quick this lens is when you've got it on, on a Sony body in AFC mode. It's just yeah. fabulous. And you mentioned uh, A7 series, so it'll fit a full frame camera. It's for full frame, absolutely, yeah. Which is even more amazing, isn't it? The fact that you can get a 28 to 200 with 2.8 at the wide end yeah. and it will fit um, a, a full frame sensor. And it's so compact, so light, and the quality is still good. It's like, yeah. it's almost yeah. a yeah. unicorn of a lens. You, you're always starting to think that it's the compromise. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's, there's more of those uh, boxes that tick, Yeah. You know, that there's more of those things that tick the right box. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, the other nice thing about these lenses. So that particular one, it's designed to fit the Sony body. It's not a lens that's been built before and then adapted sure. with an adapter or what have you. Um, so it's just 575 grams. So it's just so lightweight, really matches well. Yeah. If I just pop one here, which yeah. knowing um, Tamron Sony fit lenses as Paul and I do, <laughs> given the fact that we both use them. <laughs> um, not exclusively, but we, we both have several Tamron lenses for our A7s. Um, do, do, does it have the same construction as the, uh, the 2875 and um, that RXD range of lenses? Absolutely. So, so it is an RXD lens again. Uh, so it's got the same drive system. Uh, it's rapid, extra, um, uh, extra silent stepping drive. Um, <laughs> these, uh, these lens companies yeah. are they're acronyms. <laughs> yeah, it should, it should just be really good focusing, is what we should call it. So, <clears throat> there we go. that'll be the next one. <laughs> so, here I've got oh, yeah. a <laughs> and that's the 200 beside it. So, it's almost identical in terms of size, um, uh, construction, the way it's put together is very, very similar. The difference being the 2875 is 2.8 all the way through. Yeah. And the 28200 goes out to 200. But is 2.8 to 5.6, um, so that's the, the the only any any real difference between the, the two. Similar kind of price as well. Um, I'm not quite sure what they are on the system at the moment, but uh, 2875 uh, is it 749 at the moment? 749, yeah. So 749 and and this one's 799 for the 28200. So. Um, uh, yeah, we sold a, a few of those straight off the bat as soon as they came out. <laughs> yeah. I remember we came out of lockdown and we just had them in stock and we had a few people come in wanting travel zooms and mm. I sold a few of those. So. And cool, uh, some cash back at the moment as well. So Yeah, even better. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking about the 2875, um, yeah. we're currently shooting on the 2875 2.8 at 75mm. Mm -hmm from memory yeah um and i've got one as, at home on my um a73 now there's that question <clears throat> when you buy a camera especially if you want to do weddings or events or just general um having a a general all-purpose lens so it normally is a 2470 and then are you like f4 or 2.8 most people go for f4 because it's a bit smaller yeah. unless they really need that low light capability and then it's 2.8 but then you look at the um, Sony range and you see the 2470 f4, which is a nice lens. It is. Um, but it, and it's quite small and it feels nice. And then you want a 2.8 and you're like, oh, that's a lot of money for a G Master. And it is exquisite. It is a very sharp, very nice lens. But the price tag um, shows you just how nice it is. Yeah. Now, I was thinking, well, I'm not spending that much money. I'm not earning money out of that lens solely. So, um, I was looking around and the 2875 popped up into that kind of question. And you think, how good can this lens be? 
and you read the reviews and you have a play and you think, oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> this is almost as good as a lens <laughs> that's two, or two to two and a half times as expensive, if not a little bit more, depending on the deal at the time. And you're getting a lens that's such good quality, so quick, in low light as well. And it's so light. But yeah, it doesn't feel horrible and flimsy like a lot of lenses can do when they're really lightweight. But that lens, it's so compact yeah. given it's given you 2.8. Because you look at the G Master and that is a monster of a lens on it the front is. of your camera. I, I was I was astounded if I'm honest. I think, I think that's the thing. It's the, it's the weight difference as well. So talking about uh, uh, needing to go to the chiropractors, it's... Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure what the G Master is, but it's got to be something like 850 grams, uh, I would think. Um, and the Tamron one, uh, where are we? We're uh, 550 grams, so it's really, really lightweight, and it makes such a difference because if you if you're going out and you've actually probably got or you probably want to have a 24 70 to 8, you might want to have a 7200 or a 7180 in our case, and maybe a wide angle lens. And if you add up all the maths for all of those. Um, uh, you know, ours, ours are coming in at uh, 420, 550, so that's, yeah, and uh, and 7180 is 810 grams. So the, the weight difference by the time you've got all the kit together, if you've got the the, the, the Sony glass, it's just so much more weight. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And the other great thing about, um, for, at least for both of us, yeah. is the video capability of the lens. Being light, it's easier to get onto a gimbal yeah. without mm -hmm. it feeling too unbalanced. And... Also, it's nice and quiet. You never have quiet. to worry about the autofocus going, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> making that very annoying noise. That, that was one of the things they did with the RXD focusing drive. It was, it was one of the key features. And it's, it's one of the first times I remember Tamron talking about um, a video in their, in their press releases and saying that this has been designed as a, uh, a, a focusing system that's really good in that environment. Um, and that's why they've used it on, on you know, a large number of the Sony lenses. Uh, that we've now got it's perfect for that so the, you meant oh say again i was going to say the other, the other thing that's really good for for video if you're talking about putting a putting a lens onto a or maybe onto a gimbal um uh and balancing it uh and, and then you want to uh, you want to put filters on the front and that kind of thing if you're adding filters onto these lenses all of the um sony fe mount lenses that have come through from tamron have all got exactly the same filter size so they're all 67 mil yeah. Um, so that if you're if you're buying um, if you're buying filters that maybe are for um, uh, maybe you've got a neutral density filter for for video use or you're using a polarizing filter, you can afford to to spend the, the best money to match the optics that you've got and match the quality yeah. of the camera. So buy really good quality filters, uh, but you don't need one for each different lens. You can buy a really good one. Yeah. So yeah, because it's the same filter. Yeah. Size. which is great for uh, videographers with variable NDs. Yeah. Which is probably one of the most expensive filters to have to purchase, but the most useful. If, one. if you're wanting a good one, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So you don't want that crisscross happening, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Only on the dance floor. <laughs> um, so you spoke about, I think it was three lenses. Uh, so the 2875, and then there was two others, a wider one and a longer one. Um, mm -hmm. And they kind of fit into your almost trinity of uh, zoom lenses for the uh, FE mount. Slightly like plunged that way. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a uh, uh, we've got a, a wide angle 17 to 28, uh, which is really nice. It's 400 and, uh, 440 grams, 420 grams, so really lightweight. Um, the great thing about it as well is you can you can focus so close. All of all of these lenses you can focus at ridiculously close distance. Um, but 17 to 28, uh, uh, you can focus down to 19 centimeters at the wide angle end. Uh, and that's from that's from the, the the sensor plane, so it's not from the front of the lens, uh, which is a crazy distance. So if we've got a, a bit of A4 paper here, uh, that is 20 centimeters just there. Uh, so you can see how quick we can get. So, well, yeah, so you're just oh, in, just in front of the lens here. Um, that's crazy. It is. Yeah, it is <laughs> crazy. Um, it's basically a macro lens. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then on the telephoto side, we've got the um, the seventy to one hundred and eighty, um, which uh, uh, came through um, just at the beginning of lockdown. I think it was April time we released this. Uh, and so I think it's very important cool. to say at this point as well that that lens is two point eight because it yeah. looks like an f four. Yeah. <laughs> just as a comparison, if I can. Yeah. 
This is um, this is the uh, Canon and Nikon um, 7200 f2.8. And then if I just put this around the other way, and that is... It's incredible, um, isn't it? Bonkers. Yeah. Now, the way that the, the, the reason for it and the, what they've done is they've produced a 70 to 180 mil. Um, so it is 20 mil shorter than the 7200 f2.8. But that, that uh, 20 mil at the long end is the reason that lenses become so big and heavy. Sure. Um, and when you're, when, you're, when you're shooting with this, I mean, it's, it's only, uh, like I say, 800 and, uh, where are we, 810 grams. Um, so the, the, the 10 mil one that I've got for Canon and Nikon is uh, nearly 1,500 grams. So the weight saving is extreme just for, for that, that 20 mil difference in, in length. So it means Wait. this is the lens that you will carry out with you. Yeah. And uh, honestly, with pretty much any of the Sony range, especially the more recent ones, yeah. cropping in an extra to get your 20 mil is not going to be any hardship at all, really, is it? Yeah. The quality is going to be there. And with the money that you save, yeah, exactly. camera on, you'd have a bit of cash left <laughs> yeah. in your pocket to get the higher pixel camera. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they're, they're really good things. The other thing, so the 70 to 180 has also got a different focusing system. This is a VXD, uh, which uh, is, is voice coil talk drive. Um, and what that means is in the, in the lens, there Who are comes up with these names. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, but coil. You've, got, you've got two focusing uh, mechanisms in the voice coil oh. talk drive that, that go against each other. So they're both moving which means that the focus is much, much quicker, much more accurate. Um, and uh, and that, that's the reason that um, you can just get amazing pictures in, in AFC mode again. Uh, if, you, if you track birds and things, uh, I took it out the first day I used it. I took it out and I've got loads of red kites where I live. Uh, and uh, just, just wandering along the high street, and there's this red kites flying out above. I've just shot a series of pictures, and they're all in focus, all tracking the bird. I just couldn't believe it. It was outstanding. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, stuff. isn't it? Especially when we were speaking with Angela about how good focus systems are to the point where it's almost not even a, yeah. a thing. And it's nice to see that lens manufacturers are keeping up with oh, what yeah. the cameras can do as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. we're at a point where the cameras can do so much. Yeah, then they've got the process. We start to rely on the lenses a lot more to, to really push yeah. us past those It's that physical limit, isn't it, almost? Yeah. To, and now they're including multiple. <laughs> And, and, and talking of that, and yes. talking of um, uh, <laughs> talking of keeping up with the cameras as well, the the, the other nice thing with this series is um, they're all um, fully compatible with Sony's clever systems, um, the, uh, um, the IAF, the direct manual focus, um, uh, so you can still fan the image on the viewfinder when you're doing in DF, DMF mode to try and get the pin sharp focus. All the, all the lens corrections, the shading, chromatic aberration, all works perfectly. It is, it is mad how good those lenses are yeah. for the Sony range. And they have to be, to be honest, because the Sony sensor, especially as they get better and better, they don't, yeah. they're not kind to lenses if they're not good quality. Yeah. Like and the level quite thing as well, I found, is that, you know, uh, like Adobe recognizes them. Yeah. So when you put them into like Photoshop and stuff, like it comes up on my computer that, oh, you shot an A7 III with the Tom on 2875. Yeah. So it will do those like little final adjustments and yeah. stuff that is uh, that is needed on every lens, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Brilliant. We've also got, if you're if you're a Sony user, there's also um, a really nice little set of primes. So we've got the 20 mil. Uh, we've got... <laughs> Hey, Jerry, you'll be making sales to Paul, let alone anybody else at this rate. 24 and 35, so. Dangerous. All, all F2.8, one to two macro as well. So you can get, wow. um, if you take the 20 mil and the 24 mil. And you get perspective then of what's in the background. So you can get really close to a, um, uh, I don't know, a, a, a leaf with a, um, uh, I don't know, a, a ladybird or something on it, yeah. uh, but then have it um, in context in its environment rather than having all the background completely blurred away. Uh, yeah. Great, great thing to do. Definitely. That's brilliant. I think we've got a little bit carried away on the whole Sony front. Sony thing, yeah. Is, you know, I think the, uh, <laughs> other brands do exist. Other brands do exist. And it's, uh, 
you know, it comes across that Tamron uh, are only doing uh, stuff for Sony, but and we only sell Sony cameras. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> but uh, definitely other brands are available. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Tamron are definitely best as well. Yeah, I've got a Nikon camera myself, so I'm a I'm a, okay. I'm a Nikon guy. There and we go. So we can defend the Nikon <laughs> Yeah, my colleague Alex is a Canon user, so. Uh, oh, so what lenses do you have available for uh, Nikon and Canon that would be comparable to the lenses we just spoke about in the Sony range? Um, there's, there's a few different options. So, so uh, I'll probably start with, um, uh, we've got a 2470 uh, G2 lens. So the G2 lenses came out um, uh, a little while back um, uh, as generation two of the 2470 that they, they made previously. But uh, uh, we've got... 2470 USD, so it's ultrasonic silent drive, um, and it's the, the G2 series of lenses. And this it's like when you're buying a car and they describe yeah. every feature of the car in two or three or four letters. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But it's, it's F2.8. <laughs> F2.8 all the way through, really, really sharp. Um, and it's got uh, lots of the features that actually are on the, the, the kind of Sony ones as well. So we've got fluorine coating on the front element which makes it really easy to clean. Uh, they've got uh, BBAR lens coatings, which means you can shoot um, straight towards the sunlight um, and it minimizes any ghosting and flare that you used to get uh, back in the olden days. Uh, it's really, really good at suppressing uh, uh, that, that type of thing. So it gives you loads of confidence. Uh, it's got really nice contrast, um, a really nice feel to the lens as well. Um, yeah, they're very well made, like the feel of them. Yeah. yeah. It's got that sort of metal finish on. I love the finish, the yeah. It's cold in yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stabilise the so many lens on the TV. <laughs> really? Not yet. I haven't. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, that's the other channel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it also has um, stabilisation. I got talked into the yeah. rest for these two. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Jerry. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got VC as well. So Tamron have got a system called uh, vib vibration compensation, which is their um, version of stabilization in, in lens stabilization, and it uses three points um, to, to balance the floating element. Um, so it's a really really good system. And this this was the first lens to be manufactured that achieved five stops of correction, um, yeah. secret tested. Um, That's in lens, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> It's pretty impressive. The 7200 has exactly the same kind of system, so that's also getting to five stops super tested. Um, and they're both uh, getting to, uh, yeah, constant F2.8. So a really, really good uh, option compared to uh, uh, the, the, the camera brand's own lenses. And do you have a wider angle lens as well? That gets along with so, so there's, a, again, there's a few options. There's a, a 15 to 30 G2 in that series. Um, which has got all the same same kind of benefits, um, really quick focusing with the, um, uh, the dual microprocessor control in it. Uh, and then we've also got another um, uh, new lens which has come out. I've actually bought one of these myself, which is, uh, uh, and I bought it because it's um, it's really uh, really lightweight and really small. It's a 17 to 35 f2.8. Um, yeah. Really nice, neat lens. And I just thought it was a small one. <laughs> um, Weight-wise, it's coming in at 460 grams. So the, the 1530 G2 is about, uh, uh, is about 1.1 kilos, about 1,100 grams. Uh, and I wanted myself to have something that went wide angle, uh, sure. but was nice and lightweight that I could carry around as a street lens. Um, so I thought this was a really, really good option. This uh, is a relatively new lens in the, in the Tamron stable as well. Uh, came out um, just last year. 17 is still really <clears throat> wide. Especially on full frame. On full frame wide. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. it's still, I mean... 15 is going like, you know, you're definitely doing something that well, you're planned any, for. Yeah, and anything further than that, you're going into worrying about distortion and stuff, yeah. aren't you? I think 17 is one of those safe values, knowing that your lens, unless it's not a very good lens, is going to be really well corrected yeah. at 17. And you can still use it for your, like, group shots and things like that at weddings or yeah, events you where you don't want those it. people on the end <laughs> stretching too much. Yeah. <laughs> And the, the 1735 is also, it's 2.8 to 4. Um, so yeah. you get 2.8 at the wide end and then F4 um, at 35 mil. So it's, it's still great. You can still throw the backgrounds out. So that makes a really good lens for doing uh, 
uh, doing Astro as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the other great thing is that Tamron have made small um, kind of, uh, what's the word? They, they've made slight, um, my words have gone. I've done a you, Paul. Done a me. <laughs> <laughs> compromise, a slight compromise by going from 2.8 to F4. But again, I imagine it was like the uh, the 70 to 180 that that extra 20 mil would weigh a lot. And the same with having 2.8 at 35 on the lens would have taken it to a weight that was not as useful as being at F4. Yeah, it would have been huge. Um, and uh, everything they're doing with lenses at the moment is to try to look at making them uh, as small as they can be and as lightweight as they can be for the given situation. Um, so, so there's been a lot of things where they're looking at options that cut down on um, what you have to carry with you. Uh, sure. I'll give you another example as well, actually. A, a lens that came out at a similar time to the 1735, and it's kind of part of a set with the two, is a 35 to 150. Yeah. yeah. But for full frame, this is a, a fabulous option. Um, so you could have 1735 uh, at the wide end, and then 35, 150 at the long end. So you could just take two lenses out with you, wherever you go. You've still got f2.8 wide on both lenses. Yeah. This one, because it goes longer and because you're going up to 150, but it's also got stabilization built into this lens just to help you out um, at the longer end. But it's just a fabulous one lens solution to pop onto your full frame DSLR, Canon or Nikon fit. Um, and then uh, you've got all of the, I mean, if you're a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer, for instance, um, you've got all of, all of the, the classic sort of 35 mil, uh, 50 mil, 85 mil, 135, 150. Um, so anything that you might want to do in a portrait, you can do in this. So if you if you know you're going to go to an environment, but you're not quite sure what you're going to find when you get there, this lens is really adaptable and it can it can really, really work out well for you. Um, I'm actually and, talking yeah. about wedding photographers. You know, uh, a lot of instances now, uh, wedding photographers will bring two cameras with them. Yeah. And, you know, you could have something like, you know, the 1735 on one camera yeah. and then the 35 to 150 on another. Yeah. And yeah. then you've got all the range covered with 2.8 available in, in certain yeah, instances exactly. as well. And also weighing a heck of a lot less Indeed. than if you had, you know, OEM versions of the lenses. Yeah. Um, also, speaking about G2, um, and super long lenses um, yeah. are available for Canon and Nikon. You do the 150-600, don't you, the G2? We do. Um, <clears throat> so here it is. Popular lens. This is, this is super popular at the moment. Um, it's, uh, it's a really nice weight. It's just under two kilos. So um, uh, it compares really, really well with other, other solutions in the market. It's uh, super sharp, 150 right the way through to 600. Um, brilliant for, for bird photography, for uh, aircraft, yeah. taking pictures of planes and stuff. Um, uh, it's absolutely great for that. Um, you've also got, if you say you want to work in a bird hide or something, you can just turn it around to wherever you want and then lock off the focus. Uh, sorry, lock off the zoom. Um, so that it stiffens the zoom ring to stop you from locking it. So if you want to set up for something and just leave it, that's really, really easy to do. Um, but very, very quick, very responsive focus again. Um, it's the USD focus. And you've also got a bunch of modes on, on, on this. So, so I don't know if you can see just on there, we've got a few little switches. Yeah, we can see just about. Uh, so we've got uh, three modes of stabilization, one, two, and three. Uh, one is just general uh, general purpose, I guess. Um, number two is panning mode, so designed for if you're tracking something uh, in a panning direction. And three is what I, I label as max. Um, and what it does is it, it stabilizes the uh, lens only at the point that you fire the actual shutter. So the image that you see through the viewfinder isn't stabilized, and it just puts all of its energy from the processing into that moment of capture, um, wow. which is really handy. You can also limit the focus as well. So if you just want to work at the long end, um, uh, you Great. can do that. just limit it. Or, or um, when there's a, a chain link fence in the way or some other form of protective barrier. Or, yeah, it just stops it from trying to... Or wildlife or zoos or whatever, where there's either a barrier or foliage. Yeah. It, quite close to you. Focus straight through it, yeah. Nobody wants just one really zoomed in picture of a leaf. <laughs> instead of the bird you're looking for. The, the, other, the other nice thing, talking about leaves though, the other nice thing that you can do with this is it's, uh, 
it's like an ultra tele macro almost. It's not quite macro, um, but at, at the at the long end, it'll focus down to 2.2 meters. So you can still, if you've got um, flighty subjects that you want a, a close up picture of, but you don't want to get too close to them, it's great for stuff like that as well. You'd be surprised how well you can use it in a, yes. in a garden environment kind of thing. Paul loves the spider, don't you, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, the um, the Arca Swiss uh, plate on here as well. So uh, that's uh, on here is is not but just just a nice little touch. Not having to faff about the plates because yeah. you can leave one on your camera body and then the one on your foot. And also, the great thing about it being on the foot. Um, is you can slide it around more easily so you don't have to worry about the length of the plate you've got Good but point. also you don't have to worry about rotating which yes. drives me nuts especially yeah. on longer lenses because you get that leverage effect and it's twisting a lot more easily so it's the other lens that you could consider as well if you were, if you were looking for a long lens solution but you didn't want something quite um uh, going up into the two kilo territory the 100 400 is another really good option and it's an option i chose uh, myself um just because it's uh it's about 1135 grams i think uh where are we uh yeah 1135 grams because they've used magnesium in the core of the lens to bring the weight down um uh and it's it's just a really really nice option so, so that's a good selling then, isn't it? Yeah. yeah for those people who don't want to quite go to, for the big boy 150 600 they want yeah. something that have great zoom but doesn't weigh and I think once again, it was it was nice to see when it came out because you know at the time, you know if if we were a Canon and Nikon shooting, you know we had the Canon <coughs> one hundred to four hundred, uh, we had the the Nikon eighty to four hundred, and once again they were big heavy lenses, mm. and you, you know we used to uh, we used to recommend things like seventy to three hundred, and then go well if you want anything more than yeah. three hundred. Unfortunately, you're going very big and you're going very expensive. Yeah, yeah. You know, there wasn't really another alternative. No. And then we saw things like, uh, you know, third party ma manufacturers like Tamron yeah. bring out yeah. the 100 to 400. Yeah. And suddenly we've got something that doesn't, you know, really increase, you know, exponentially in price. Yeah. But then yeah. all is still, you know, not too much bigger than one of the, you know, prosumer 70 to 300s that yeah. we see. So. Yeah. I've got another lens, actually, that falls into a similar kind of space. So uh, oh. uh, a lot of people aspire to getting a 7200 f2.8. Um, yeah. uh, um, you know, professionals use it all the time. It's a real go-to lens for a lot of people. But some people pick it up and go, actually, but am I going to use that all the time? Am I going to take it out with me because it's 1,500 grams? Yeah. And it's in a similar position. So I'll just grab a lens that I've got here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yes. So many lenses yeah. all fit on screen. Yeah. That's a lens manufacturer. Yeah, that is. So this is this is my 70 to 210. Uh, yeah. It's a constant F4. And if I just show you the difference in uh, in size between that and a 7200. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. It's substantial. It is. It's a lot it's a lot narrower. So it's a lot uh, a lot uh, um, smaller in 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 uh, diameter, um, but shorter as well. So uh, the seventy two ten um, comes in at eight hundred and fifty grams compared to just under fifteen hundred grams, um, and it's it's a brilliant lens. It's so quick to focus. It's got a really nice, um, nicely designed focusing system, so that less elements kind of move in in the, in in the lens, which is what makes it lighter and makes it easier to make and it small. Is a great um, aperture. Is. That for most people, like, a lot of people don't even shoot a 2.8. They own 2.8 lenses. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? If you're doing portraits and things like that, if you're at 2.8, you might have sort of an eye in but an ear out, or a, uh, yeah. you know. So that so there's often you stop down a little bit anyway, yeah. um, and and just take an eye. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Or a camera that can you can boost you know, that really ISO. Boost the ISO and also well. with the um, with the stabilization as well. You can afford to run a slower shutter speed than yeah. perhaps you'd ordinarily have done years ago. So, yeah, I don't think there is as much of a stigma around an f4 lens versus a 2.8 as like I've got um, the Canon f4 uh, 7200, and I think that's great on my yeah. um, uh, Sony. Do you know what I mean? I've never thought, do you know what? I really should have a 2.8 7200. It just 
it just wasn't something that I thought would be yeah. something that I personally needed. And I've used it for all sorts. And F4 was more than adequate. Yeah. So. Well, I, I use the, the 7210 loads for car photography. Um, yeah. I, and actually, I don't want 2.8 uh, because I want more, more of it to be in, but I still want to be able to blow the background out. Um, and it's still been, be able to take right. pictures eight or 12 hours later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I still have a shoulder, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. Um, so that shows us that you um, obviously cover Sony and um, Nikon and Canon, um, yeah. and you can have um, a great range of zooms. Um, are there any other lenses that you think um, our viewers might be interested in from Tamron? There, there are. So there are a couple of other options that we've got. Um, we've got a, uh, a great 90mm macro. So, so if you're looking for a, um, a lens to do really close up photography um the uh the 90 mil macro is a is a is a real must it's um it's really small um it's really really well put together it's got so much heritage going back it's something like um 40 years i think the heritage of the 90 mil goes back now um and this is the latest incarnation of it it's uh um stabilized it's got the usd focusing drive um and it's been, I mean, it's in, have a look at the test reports that you can find online. It does really, really, really well uh, compared to other lenses that are out there. Um, and I, I love it. Uh, it's one to one macro. Um, so you've got stabilization, like I say, you've got the ability to limit the focus or you can take, turn the focus off if you, if you don't want to, um, to do that. It doesn't extend. Um, great, great lens. If you're, if you're using it, uh, I mean, 90 mil for macro photography is fabulous. Uh, but it's also brilliant for portrait photography. Um, yeah. And I used to, I used to have a, a D7000, uh, but I've still got a D7000 Nikon camera, which is crop sensor. And this on a crop sensor camera as well, uh, yeah. I mean, it's great for full frame, but if you've got it on crop, it gives you about 135 mil, which is just fabulous for portrait yeah. photography and, and all sorts of other things too. Um, so I'd strongly recommend it if you're looking for a, a really, really good, really fast macro lens. And, one of the things that they did when they when they made this version of it is they changed the way that the, the stabilization but also the focusing worked um, so that the, the focusing can cope with you when you're really close to something you, you you move very slightly and the focusing system can cope with that and adapt and just keep adjusting itself sure. but not break free and have to keep hunting backwards and forwards to yeah, find very it. important on that crew, yeah. especially for subjects that are live and the wind is blowing a little bit as well that's a very yeah. very useful feature it's really really great um and then and then the other the other one that we've got which is uh, a prime lens which came out recently uh is the 35 mil 1.4 um and this is uh this is an, a, a, an amazing lens it was uh, it came out uh um last year and the brief that the designer was given was uh, would like you to make the best lens that Tamron have ever made. Can you imagine, as, a, as a, you sat there in your design department and the president of Tamron comes yeah. out and says to you, I'd like you to, to design and make the best lens we've ever produced. Uh, and he's gone out and done it, and it is absolutely fabulous. Um, uh, some of the test reports were just uh, absolutely dreamy. It's just so sharp. Um, and a, a really nice bit of kit. So if you're after a 35 mil, I'd strongly recommend going out and having a look at this f1.4. It's uh, um, yeah, so it's, it's a really super bit of kit to, to go out with. Well, that's brilliant. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if we go to some of the I comments to, to say, see if there's any uh, I think questions. It's, uh, maybe that we have a look at some of the comments. And yeah. See what you guys are saying at home. Um, so Graham Miller said, "Stay in the dark, lads." I think that was in reference to the studio. Yeah. Um, <laughs> A, a, a windowless box um he also says will tamron ever make lenses with a fuji hex mount well who, who knows to be honest with you it's uh, um uh, you know i work for a distributor of tamron lenses so we we uh, uh import their products and distribute them in the uk um i'd love to know what some of the uh, kind of secrets of development are but unfortunately they don't get this far but um <laughs> you have to pass it <laughs> you have to speak to those that know um yeah. we've got a hello from or hi from andrew and uh, gary says my first zoom lens was a tamron 70 to 150 um cf tele macro in the late 80s combined with adaptal 2 on my fuji stx2 still got them all 
brilliant. So there's longevity in Tamron as well. Yeah, there yeah. is. Yeah. Now, Adaptal uh, wouldn't that be a lovely thing. Say again? Uh, Adaptal, wouldn't that be a lovely thing in this uh, uh, modern day with uh, electronics and stuff? But. Um, Andrew said, Adaptal 2 lenses are still a great option for putting Tamron vintage lenses on different mirrorless cameras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. um, Tanya says, ah, I got my dates wrong for the, sh for the show. Thought it started on Friday. It started last Friday. But it's all on catch up, yeah, so really no fear. And it was good to see you earlier, by the way, even with the mask on. <laughs> and I, I called you Tanya, not Tina. Well done, Joel. <laughs> Thanks for that reference. <laughs> <laughs> so why not be important, Paul? <laughs> and um, <laughs> oh, Tanya, I think this was the voice uh, coil system you're talking about. Thought it was a lens that could understand you for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> So, and Dibs, um, the uh, gentleman we spoke to yesterday um, on the interview said, fab lens the primes are, and uh, totally agreed. Camera bag weight is not something to ever forget about. And he says the F4 is nice. Um, and he asked, does it have a, co uh, a collar as well, the F4? I think that was the 72. The 7210, there is a collar available separately. So uh, um, Tamron released it without the collar built into it because um, a lot of people are just going to want to take that lens out as it is. Um, yeah. And so, uh, I, I guess a smaller proportion of people uh, will want the color, so it just makes the lens cheaper to buy in the first place, and then sure. you can add the color afterwards. But, um, but yeah, for lenses, you might not always want to put on. Yeah, like I don't have my color on my and lens I think all the time. From, it's it's a way of showing that there's not as much stress as you would see on bigger lenses. Yeah, especially the mount. Yeah, you know, when it comes to looking at the mount is concerned, I mean, we always want to try and hold the lenses. So get that underneath. center of gravity in the yeah. middle. Um, but uh, typically, the ones that we see with the mounts on, we tend to think, well, yeah, definitely, we don't want to just be holding it by yeah. the camera because <laughs> something's going to happen. Yeah. Where the 7210 sort of, it's not heavy enough to sort of do any damage uh, if it was just sort of, you know, left just by holding yeah. the camera. Exactly. Um, it's kind of on a tripod if you wanted to use it it's quite a nice thing to have a collar sometimes the other great thing about collars is being able to hold them yeah <laughs> like another extra handle yeah which is like pe some people prefer it <clears throat> some people and some don't. people put um like their black rapid strap on there instead of on the camera yeah to get that fits, better weight fits balance a bit better so, yeah. around your hips or the peak design um because you can get the uh screw in bits with the anchor there we go like that lucky. Comes, <laughs> yeah, lucky lucky <laughs> and it comes with a strap so you can get that nicer balance between the camera and the lens yeah. rather than it just being around the uh camera lugs and kind of feels like the weight's pulling more Absolutely. um so oh gary says i popped into shop today too didn't see you both oh sorry <laughs> We're probably upstairs. Ga right? Gary. Gary Eisenhower. Ah, uh, so yeah. Hopefully Sorry, we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. I, I'm just wondering, do you have any other questions about the Tamron? No, I mean, um, we probably haven't discussed, because you can buy, uh, you've got the uh, TAP module that you can get for, uh, for these as well, which I think is worth mentioning, uh, because it's another way of... Uh, Obviously, updating firmware on some which of the is fantastic lenses. with Tamron, being yeah. able to update the firmware on your lens. So you're essentially getting a better lens without having to buy a lens. Yeah, as they tweak it, and uh, stuff. but it enables you to do calibration as well, doesn't it, Joe? It does. So, so yeah, not only can you can you update firmware because cameras change all the time and the features in them change all the time. So being a, being able to update firmware is quite a quite a useful thing nowadays. It helps with proofing. If you want to um, uh, either change the way that the stabilization operates slightly um, uh, to, to suit your needs, you can you can make some tweaks to that. Uh, but also, um, uh, if you want to change the way that the focus system works as well, um, there's various calibration things that you can uh, uh, you can modify in there as well. So a bit like in the cameras, you've got um, the, the the camera calibration um, uh, setting yeah. for focusing. Um, but you've got that in a in a greater way with the tapping console. You can go into more depth as to how you uh, how you want to calibrate that. Oh. If you choose to. And if you accidentally reset your camera, obviously yep. you lose your calibration. Where yep. if you set it in the lens, you won't then, reset your lens very well. No. Well, you have to plug it in yeah, to reset exactly. it. So and and save the data and reset it. 
<clears throat> and I think the great thing about um, being able to buy lenses what, like Tamron where you can update the firmware and tweak all the different settings, it makes it more customizable to you. It also future-proofs it in a lot of ways, like you were saying, with the additional features that yeah. people keep adding, <laughs> like Sony keep adding a lot of times. And yeah. it makes it, it makes you feel like you're getting a lens that's going to last you a long time. Um, and considering where we've come from in terms of lens technology, yeah. and we're getting to the point where you can have five stops of uh, stabilization. You can tweak how that stabilize, stabilization behaves. So if you're into sports, motorsport photography, or wildlife photography, being able to tweak the way it pans, and oh, and being able to use slower shutter speeds to get more creative. Absolutely. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's fantastic. Actually, the, the other thing that's probably worth mentioning is um, uh, the Nikon and Canon have both got mirror solutions now with uh, 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 Nikon Z and Canon uh, EOS R. Um, and a lot of people are looking at this kind of series of lenses as an option for uh, buying into certain things that they've missed uh, and they want to add to those camera series. Uh, and compatibility is always a query. Now, I can't say um, uh, I mean, they're not all compatible, uh, but they but some of them are, are compatible with uh, uh, Canon, uh, uh, the new EOS, EOS R system, and, and yeah. Nikon. So if you just Googled um, compatibility, uh, Tamron compatibility with EOS R, and, and, and Nikon Z, it'll come up and there's a list that shows exactly which lenses are and aren't. Um, You've got a table, haven't you, um, on the website, and it tells yeah. you which are and aren't. And whether they need a firmware update to be done yeah. either by sending it off or yes. by, you know, using the console, mm -hmm. which is which is really useful. We had one where somebody had bought um, one of the M mount cannons, and I think it was the 18 to 200, and um, we just needed to send it away. It took barely any time at all, and just to update it. And it was yeah. it was fantastic that it could be updated to work on a camera. Yeah. And it wasn't a case of oh, my lens isn't going to work anymore with this new camera I bought. And I think that makes you feel a lot better. It does, yeah. <laughs> and knowing you can't, you don't have to spend a load more money just to get new features. Or... Having that backup and support, you know, yeah. that you know you can get with that. And I mean, talking about backup and support as well, it's. Uh, you do uh, extended warranties as well. Yeah. So yeah, Tamron, if you if you buy a Tamron lens from from uh, uh, your 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 local uh, um, dealer in oh, North Wales, from um, camera photography, the <laughs> best camera. <laughs> shop. Uh, you will uh, um, you'll be able to register that lens. You just need to go onto Tamron's website uh, and register the lens to get uh, an extra four years completely free of warranty. Um, so it takes it up to being a five year warranty in total. Um, it's an extra thing for just for the UK market, um, to just for UK customers buying that lens or yeah. EU customers buying that lens. We mentioned it yesterday with uh, Peak Design, like it's just confidence in a brand, yeah. you know, yeah. so just showing that we're coming away from the bare minimum that yeah. people need to provide, which is, you know, a year. Yeah, the statutory. So that's like the statutory bare minimum that everyone needs to do. I mean, yeah, you could have gone two, you could have gone three, but confidence within the yeah. brand is saying, no, we'll go all in five years. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. yeah, it's nice. Both for the customer and for us. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we know that we are well, selling a product that works to, well. To, to, easier for us to recommend them. Definitely. Just because we know that. And we've put our uh, money where our mouth is, literally. Yeah. <laughs> and bought Tamron lenses. So, yeah. definitely a good choice. So thank you very much, Jerry. Um, unless you have uh, anything else you'd like to add? No, I think we're, we're probably there. Thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me on. Um, no problem. It's been wonderful, haven't you? And hopefully we can uh, speak to you again soon. Absolutely. Thanks very much. Great. See you in a moment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Jerry. <laughs> um, oh, and Dib says, uh, cheers. It was more for when you have the additional weight of filters on the front too, the tripod color, which makes sense. Especially ah. if you got like the holder, the uh, the adapting ring, and then three pieces of glass on the front. You see, it's an extra and bit of weight. That's why we like doing it. Live. Yeah, yeah. Because anything that we <laughs> feedback we even don't even know about. Yeah, or we or forget. This, <laughs> yeah. Uh, then, uh, <laughs> uh, then uh, you're here to support us yeah. as well. Exactly. And, uh, talking about supporting us, uh, the best way that you can do that. It's a nice little segue. That yeah, it was. That. It was very good. The best way you can do that is by liking and sharing this video. So make sure that you like the video, uh, share it with all your friends. Uh, if you haven't done already, please make sure that you go over to our Facebook and YouTube channels uh, and hit subscribe. 
Uh, you can also hit the notification bell button, whatever it consists of <laughs> nowadays. Uh, I was just about to say, oh, you're getting really professional at this, and then you go and... Yeah, I go and ruin it <laughs> by saying something stupid like likey likey. <laughs> oh, that's the best bit. It certainly is. Um, and yes. we'll see everybody at 7. Yes, PM. where we have... Um, we have Chris. What's a drum roll? Oh, okay. <laughs> Chris Noel, uh, the blind photographer. So it, it's going to be a fantastic talk. Yeah. It's very inspiring. Looking forward to it. Um, so definitely do not miss that. Make sure you got your questions ready and uh, pop those into the comments so we can ask uh, Chris those questions. Um, so, and also make sure you've had your dinner. Or you can have your dinner while sitting down and watching it. Yeah. And make sure you have a drink handy, ready. It'll be a good night. Yeah. No, and then um, and we've been adding more speakers yeah. for the rest of the week. So yeah. if, you've, if you checked maybe Friday, on the, on the website, go back and check again just yeah, to make sure you've uh, there's more. So clicked added, your reminder. I think we've added at least three more today, yeah. uh, and there'll be another probably two being added later on today or maybe tomorrow, yeah. depending on how <laughs> quick I am. Uh, getting my Netflix <laughs> out the way and getting some work done. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, can't get the staff nowadays, can you? Indeed. And on that note, we'll see you later on. Cheers. Bye-bye.